The United States expects North Korean soldiers now in Russia to deploy in combat against Ukrainian forces in coming days. Reuters correspondent Sean Hogan reports. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky publicly warned of North Korea's involvement on October 13. In an interview on Thursday, he blasted what he called a zero response from his allies. He said a weak reaction would encourage Russia's Vladimir Putin to further beef up the contingent. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and his North Korean counterpart Cho Son Hui met in Moscow on Friday. Cho said North Korean President Kim Jong-un gave an order to, quote, unswervingly and and powerfully support the Russian army. She said North Korea would firmly stand next to our Russian comrades until the day of victory. That was Reuters correspondent Sean Hogan. Gaza's polio vaccination campaign is moving into its delayed third phase. The campaign was launched September 1st after a baby was partially paralyzed in the first polio case in 25 years. VOA's Christina Menenti has more. According to aid organizations, the third phase of a delayed polio vaccination campaign in Gaza will begin on Saturday after the rollout was derailed by Israeli bombardments, mass displacement, and lack of access. The humanitarian pause to conduct the campaign had been agreed, but WHO and the United Nations Children's Agency, UNICEF, said the area covered by the agreement had been substantially reduced from the previous pause in September and would now cover only Gaza City. Kogat, the Israeli army's Palestinian Civilian Affairs Agency said it was helping to coordinate the three-day campaign, and once it was complete, there would be an assessment to decide whether the schedule would be extended. Christina Menenti, VOA News. This is VOA News. Spanish rescuers opened a temporary morgue in a convention center and battled to reach areas still cut off on Friday as the death toll from catastrophic floods rose to 205 people in Europe's worst weather disaster in five decades. Reuters correspondent Alice Rizzo has more. Mr. Overseeing Regional Corporation told a press conference, dozens of people are still unaccounted for. To support rescue efforts, some 500 soldiers have been deployed to search for the missing and assist survivors. With about 75,000 homes still without electricity, firefighters are siphoning fuel from abandoned cars to power generators to get domestic supplies back on. The storm dumped a year's worth of rain in just eight hours on Tuesday night, causing rivers to overflow and washing away roads, rail lines and bridges. Reuters correspondent Alice Rizzo. U.S. intelligence officials say a video that purports to show election fraud in Georgia is fake and the work of Russian influence actors determined to undermine faith in the integrity of next week's presidential election. The video shows someone claiming to be a Haitian immigrant, saying he intends to vote multiple times in two Georgia counties for Vice President Kamala Harris. Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger said Thursday night that the video is obviously fake and likely the product of Russian trolls attempting to sow discord and chaos on the eve of the election. The FBI and other agencies echoed that finding on Friday. Many Europeans believe much is at stake in the nail-biting U.S. elections. From NATO and the transatlantic alliance to Russia's war on Ukraine, trade relations, and the future of their own democracies. VOA's Lisa Bryant reports from Paris. Many Europeans do not have fond memories of Donald Trump's presidency. Europe-U.S. tensions grew over trade, Iran, and climate change, and Trump's allegedly transactional approach to the NATO alliance. Political analyst Nicole Bacharon. There is a sense that he's older, meaner, more radical, and more dangerous. Analysts say Europeans are largely rooting for U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris, the Democratic candidate, who they hope will continue the strong transatlantic ties under current President Joe Biden. Lisa Bryant, VOA News, Paris. Officials say a roof collapse at a railway station in northern Serbia has killed at least 13 people. The concrete roof at the entrance to the station in the city of Novi Sad came down on Friday morning. That's according to the interior minister, who says three other people have been hospitalized with serious injuries. Surveillance camera footage showed people moving in and out of the building and sitting on benches before the concrete structure suddenly collapsed on them.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.